we benchmarked um, Apache Druid versus uh, Google BigQuery. Um, and with BigQuery, we just use the out of the box uh, on demand configuration. And for Druid, we made a small uh, cluster on EC2 of uh, just, I think, three server, three relatively modest servers. Um, so that relatively small Druid cluster uh, beat BigQuery by uh, average of 3x. Um, that you see it varied quite a bit from this first query was about the same performance in both systems. The third query drew was 14 times faster. And on average, it was three. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit on the next couple of slides about why some of these queries are 14 times faster and some are one times faster, some are about the same. Um, and that, that gets into, it gets into what are the technical differences between, um, between Druid and, and BigQuery. But it's, uh, that's just the first bit. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. You can flex tape. Uh, so this, this modest, relatively modest Druid cluster um, and the out-of-the-box big query configuration, Druid was faster. But then we also did a cost analysis um, and uh, found that um, not only was this relatively modest Druid cluster faster than BigQuery, it was also cheaper. So it's faster and cheaper, about three times faster and about four times cheaper. Um, and you multiply three and four together, you get 12, of course. So that um, about a 12 times price performance advantage, which is uh, to say that um, for the same price, you expect about 12 times better performance or you expect 12 times less cost for the same performance. Um, one thing that's, that's another thing we found that's interesting is that on the BigQuery side, uh, we, we felt there was reason to believe that um, it would actually be quite challenging to, uh, at any price, get BigQuery to be as fast as Druid could be, uh, to get it all the way down to queries being just a, a, you know, dozens of milliseconds or a couple hundred milliseconds um, due to differences in the architecture that make it challenging for it to get below a, a couple seconds or so. Uh, which actually matters when you have um, a dashboard that has uh, a dozen visualizations on it. Now, as you imagine, each visualization is a separate query. These queries start to add up, and you really do want each one to be as fast as possible. Um, okay, so that being said, uh, so we can, we can sh uh, show you with numbers that we actually do have a meaningful, um, a meaningful, uh, ability here to do these sorts of hot workloads uh, in ways that, that other popular systems on the market today have, have trouble with. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about why that is. Um, um, I, I, want to look a little, I want to talk a little bit about why that is. Uh, it's from an architectural perspective. So I don't, I don't just want to show you numbers and, and talk about how you know, temperatures are cool. I, I want to give you an idea of, of under the hood what's different between Druid and um, other popular systems on the market. Um, and uh, so I, the first thing I want to talk about is um, this, this uh, idea of separating storage and compute. That's a really big idea that uh, is actually very powerful. Um, and the popular cloud data warehouses on the market, like um, Snowflake and BigQuery, take this um, to heart and they take it to a, a extreme. Um, and what we do in Druid is, is different. Uh, and as far as I know, relatively unique. Um, we don't completely combine them like a lot of classic enterprise data warehouses, uh, the ones of, the, of yesteryear. Um, we actually do use cloud storage in Druid. It is integrated with, uh, you're either gonna use a, a cloud storage like S3 or HDFS for your storage layer in Druid. So we do have a separated storage system in Druid, um, but we also preload data before queries happen. Um, and so we think this gives us the best of both worlds. Uh, it means that we do have by having this separated storage system, we have the ability to do elastic scaling in Druid without any downtime. We have the ability to, um, you know, you can scale up, you can scale down, we can get data to where it needs to be. Uh, but because of the preloading, um, we have the performance advantage of having local data. Um, and uh, this, this gives us a, a really nice spot in the architectural landscape. Um, there is one downside that I, I guess I have to acknowledge, which is that the elasticity in our preloading system is uh, takes a bit longer to respond than elasticity in a uh, BigQuery style um, system. So a, a system that has the, the no preloading um, can, in theory, be elastic. Uh, 
could in theory be elastic to the degree of, of seconds or even subseconds. So you can imagine you can scale up and scale down within seconds. Um, the Druid based system, because it does preloading, the elasticity takes a couple hours to respond, which means that you can scale up and scale down without any downtime. The system will be online, but uh, it will take a couple hours to uh, actually reach uh, the new level of scale and be completely preloaded and balanced. It'll happen in the background with no downtime again, but um, it does take, there is a bit of a delay there. So that's, that's the one downside, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I think it's worth it for the ability to get so, so much better performance. Um, and again, the fact that it is not completely combined, it does, we do have a degree of separation means that we are much more elastic than a lot of classic solutions. So it's a, it's a, um, I won't say any more about that right now, but I think it's, it's one of the most interesting architectural things about Druid. Um, uh, second one, pull-based ingestion. So this, this speaks to the freshness of data. Uh, a lot of these popular cloud data warehouses limit latency or throughput of real-time ingestion if they offer it at all. Um, in Druid, the pull-based ingestion enables tens of millions of inserts a second in true real-time. Um, so that's, that's a, a definite strength of Druid, the ability to do uh, massively scalable real-time streaming ingestion. Um, secondary indexes uh, are a big advantage. So the cloud data warehouses, they don't offer indexes beyond the partition key. Um, they actually, uh, I think, are um, very bold, and they try to frame this as a strength. Uh, in their documentations, they, they tend to say things like, we don't need secondary indexes because we can scan things so quickly, um, which I think is, uh, yeah, it's, it's bold. Um, I don't think it's true. I think that um, secondary indexes do speed things up. Um, and uh, even if you can scan quickly, a system like Druid can scan quickly. Um, it, not scanning is always better than scanning. Um, so supporting space efficient compressed secondary indexes, I think is, is a really solid feature Druid has. Um, this is actually, uh, my belief is this is one of the reasons why some of the queries that um, you compare Druid and BigQuery against, some of the queries where Druid was 10 times or more faster, um, even on that cheaper cluster, uh, I believe it was due to the, the usage of secondary indexes because those were queries that had a lot of filters in them. 